Hi, this is your Kuya Miko, and welcome again to our Dadat Didi West Scholar. Good morning to each and every one of us. Naimbag ngagsapa, titunggal maysa, kadatayu amin. Before we begin our third episode of the Dadat Didi West Scholar, may I invite every one of us to bow our heads for a minute of prayer. Kulipsi kulilipa. Kulipsi kulipana. Amami ay kabunya. Inka kud is is dunga. Dakami ay anak mo. Manya manis nan ikika. Kulip si kulilipa. Kulip si kulipana. Losan ay mataguan. Intod no'y kabunyan. Amin nga pag saya ata. Da kami mengganganap anak muna. Kulip si kulilipan. Kulip si kulipana. Salamat Kuya Miko. Gumaganda talaga ang boses natin kapag tayo umaawit sa ating Panginoon. Uh, before natin umpisahan ng ating uh, dad at for this month, gusto ko sana i-acknowledge ang ating mga viewers, starting from our regional director, Ma'am Nancy Ibantog, our uh, assistant regional director for technical services, Ma'am Tita Espitikan, our uh, viewers for today, our dear scholars, our future scholars, and most especially, our resource speaker for today, Mr. Benjo Agaluos. Good morning to all of us. Uh, for this activity, we expect that the SMP undergraduate scholarship programs will be promoted through the story of our graduate scholar today. May it also bring inspiration to our viewers, to our viewers, students to pursue the SMP courses during their undergraduate studies. At para bigyang galak ang ating programa, pakinggan natin ang mensahe ng ating tagapamatnubay sa Department of Science and Technology, Dr. Nancy Ebantog. Thank you, Gran. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Alice. And ARD Pita, at saka si Sir Benjo. Well, uh, <clears throat> on behalf of the DOST CAR family, I greet all the participants and viewers who are with us uh, today. I would also like to recognize the virtual presence of our guest and partner, uh, Mr. Benjo P. Agaluos, our uh, scholar from ABRA, who will be introduced properly in a little while. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome to this Dadat, the DOST Scholar, the third episode of the Dadat. With the need of the times in this COVID-19 pandemic, DOST CAR launched this that at the DOST Scholar on January 29, 2021. This is a new advocacy initiative of DOST CAR towards inclusive enhancement of science culture throughout the region. And when I say inclusive, we would like that the farthest barangay in CAR is aware of the DOST Science and Technology Scholarship Program. The Philippine Development Plan recognizes the role of science, technology, and innovation in the nation's long-term economic and social progress. With DOST as the premier agency for STI, the OST car remains steadfast in promoting the scholarship program for priority science and technology courses. Since 2013, 
the regional office institutionalized the science and technology scholarship caravan, wherein we go to all the provinces every year to promote the science and technology scholarship program. In today's health pandemic, our caravan did not push through last year. This year, physical gathering remains a challenge, but we have the virtual platforms too, which we adapted as our additional modality. Previously, when we conduct a seminar or activity for the scholars, we usually invite a graduate scholar to deliver inspirational message. These activities are done, however, at most four times a year. It was pre-pandemic, but we will continue this whenever we can. But we also need to think of more venues where scholarship programs will be promoted to the last farthest community in CAR. Thus, this that add the DOST scholar. This is an engagement of the agency with the scholar graduates themselves as advocates, which we also call ambassadors of DOST SMD scholarship program. Engaging the DOST's, DOST's scholar graduates to advocate the DOST scholarship program has not been optimally explored for the past years through our scholar graduates. Today, we want them to do their advocacies beyond the walls of the scholars' activities. No one is better to promote our scholarship program than the scholars themselves. And for them to continue to advocate STI, especially in their spheres of influence. Doing this will hopefully encourage students to pursue science and technology courses, be actively engaged in STI after graduation, preferably in our country, and to the incoming college students who are with us today, be counted in the next four or five years as one of the contributors to science, technology, and innovation. God bless everyone. Matago tago sa ko amin. Back to you, Gran. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Director Nancy. So para po sa ating rationale, uh, introducing po our scholarship coordinator, SRS1, Mamalisha A. Balakwa. Good day to all of us. The Philippines has 270 research and development personnel per million population according to UNESCO's 2015 survey of R&D expenditure and human resources. This is below UNESCO's standard of 380 R&D personnel per million population. In the Cordillera Administrative Region, we only have 467 R&D personnel. This is lower than the regional distribution of 13,107 R&D personnel in the country's capital region. Prior to the imposition of travel restrictions and quarantine protocols, the DOS CAR advocated the agency's scholarship program in order to invite more students and to increase the R&D pool of human resources. Among the efforts in promoting the scholarship program is the scholarship caravan conducted in all the provinces of the region where geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas were prioritized. With the increasing reach of information technology in the country, DOST Corps introduced the DADAT the DOST Scholar as part of its continuing information drive. Its purpose is to invite the youth to be scholars for generation. The term DADAT is a kankanai term that refers to an indigenous knowledge system and practice 
where the elders in the Cordilleras pass stories through word of mouth and is traditionally done by chanting. In today's third episode of the at the DOST Scholar, DOST Car will be featuring a 1995 DOST SEI Merit Scholar and now Education Program Supervisor 1 of the Department of Education, Schools Division of ABRA. To properly introduce our Regional Scholarship Ambassador, here is a recorded message from our OIC Provincial Science and Technology Director of ABRA, um, Engineer Eileen Mirna P. Malangan. Good morning to all our viewers and friends who are watching today's episode of Dad at DDUS Scholar, a DUST Scholar Story. Our speaker was born in Pamplona, Cagayan, and finished high school at the Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology, formerly the Abra School of Arts and Trades in Banguet, Abra. He was a consistent academic achiever, a member of the drama club, and a talented dance choreographer. He passed the 1995 DUSC SEI scholarship examination and was qualified under the merit program. He later graduated with a course Bachelor of Science in Physics for teacher at the Philippine Normal University in 1999 and passed the licensure examination for teachers in 2000. He took up his Master of Education major in physics at the De La Salle University with a Dep Ed Danyaki scholarship and finished in 2006. He was the head teacher two then, head teacher three in Abra High School from 2008 to 2012. He passed the principal's test of the Department of Education, National Educators Academy of the Philippines in 2015 in the Career Executive Service written examination in 2018. He already finished his first year of doctorate degree at the University of Northern Philippines in Tamang, Vigan, Itukusur. Our speaker is the Education Program Supervisor of the Department of Education, Schools Division Office in Abra, a strong pillar of Dep and Abra, and our active partner in the advocacy and implementation of our various DUSC programs in the province. He had diligently joined us during our scholarship campaigns in the different schools. He had been a mentor during our review classes conducted for our scholarship applicants and a proctor during the administration of DUSC SEI scholarship examination. His wife, Ms. Yvonne Georgette Diagalos, a faculty of Abra High School, has also been an active resource person during the conduct of scholarship reviews in the previous years. With him, together with his beautiful wife, our advocacy towards encouraging our young Abrenius to become a DUSC scholar has been a lot easier. He is a loving husband and father of three, who strongly believes that poverty is never a hindrance in achieving great things in life while keeping your feet on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our guest speaker for today's episode of Dad at the DUSC Scholar, a DUSC Scholar Story, Mr. Benjo Pinto Agalbos. Uh, welcome po, Sir Benjos, at sa aming um, third episode ng Dadat. Good, no good morning po ulit. Uh, before po tayong, um, before po natin start ang ating interview for today, uh, Sir Benjo, baka may gusto po kayong batiin ngayon. Uh, thank you very much, Ma'am, and good morning, uh, DOST Regional Office, headed by, of course, by our uh, reg able regional director, Ma'am uh, Nancy. Uh, of course, I, I, I would like to I, I would like to greet also my colleagues uh, at the Department of Education, my fellow education program supervisors who are 
currently conducting the interview and observation of demonstration teaching for teacher applicants right now. So I ask permission to them that I will not be with the group today because of this undertaking. And of course, uh, to my wife and my kids. Uh, and I would like also to mention one of my former student who happened to give his comment at the DOST Scholar Facebook right now in the person of Dane Frawley Soriano. He is my uh, former student who is also a DOST scholar. You know, it, it's really, it feels, it feels great to be appreciated by a former student because uh, you know that uh, somehow you were able to touch them and uh, contribute something uh, for them. Uh, uh, Dane, I am also very proud of you being a DOSP scholar. And he is, uh, I think he is now one of the professors in, in one of the prestigious university in Baguio. Thank you so much, po, Sir Benjo. Uh, gusto ko kung may mensahe po ang ating regional director sa ating pong chat box. Sabi po niya, thank you so much, Sir Benjo, for accepting our invite. May our efforts bear fruits. God bless you po, Sir. So, um, ready na po ba kayo, Sir, sa ating interview po? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you po, Sir. So, um, may mga may mga patanungin po ako sa inyo. So, ang una po sa ating mga katanungan ay, Paano po niyo nalaman itong DOST scholarship po? Uh, way back 1995, that was 25 years ago, medyo matagal na, no? Uh, information is most accessible using radio in the province of Abra. So the scholarship program was first introduced to me through a radio announcement of the DOST inviting interested high school students, actually uh, graduating high school students to take the qualifying exam. So in fact, it's through the radio. Ah, dun, dun, dito po natin nakikita yung ano, generational gap. Kasi ngayon po, may mga internet na po, ginagamit na po natin yung mga yes. different. In fact, I am a witness of the change that before... Uh, in terms of information dissemination because mm. uh, after graduation, I, I was hired as a public secondary school teacher. And uh, during that time, uh, I was uh, requested by my principal to assist DOST in the administration and even in, in, in the distribution of application forms. And right now, and dami nang nabago, ano? Uh, you have the caravan, you mm. have the in infographics posted in Facebook, you even have the primers. Mm. So, yun na, ang, na, ang dami nang nabago. Yes po, sir. At, um, nakik salamat din po sa mga effort po na ginawa nyo in the past for continuously supporting the DOST SEI programs po. So, uh, may mga applicants po tayo ngayon for the 2021 mm. Undergraduate Scholarship tapos sa JLSS po. Ano po ang maipapayon niyo po sa ating mga applicants at sa mga soon applicants po ng ating DOST scholarship? Uh, just be just be yourself, uh, believe in yourself. You enjoy what you are doing. Uh, I, I think there's no such difficult thing to be achieved as long as you are determined, uh, you persevere, and you are disciplined. Go on, go on with your dreams. Uh, catch your dreams. Napakaganda po nun, sir. Tama po. Go on with your dreams. So, uh, maari po ba na, maari niyo po bang imbitahan ang ating mag-aaral para po mag-apply sa ating DOST scholarship programs po? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, to all our viewers out there sa mga nagplaplano na mag-apply for the DOST scholarship, uh, this is your chance to make your dream a reality. Uh, of course, uh, I, I, I enjoy the benefits coming from this program. Napakalaming benefit na makukuha. And I would like to mention some, although I know uh, the, the DOSD advocacy is that uh, good, but I would still like to repeat, I know uh, the monthly stipend is very promising. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just don't know how much right now is the monthly stipend, but during my time, uh, I was able to receive uh, around 2,500, I think, uh, per month. And that was, a, that was uh, good enough for me to survive in a month. No, even without the even without the allowance coming from my parents, you have the book allowance, you have the uh, transportation allowance, uniform allowance, and and a lot uh, more benefits that will be coming from the DOST scholarship program. So uh, why why wait? You look for the nearest DOST office and apply for the scholarship now. Thank you so much, po, sir. Um, to the to the viewers, para po malaman pa kung ano kung ano po ang ibang mga information regarding po sa ating scholarship um, programs po, basahin pwede po nating i-visit ang website nila sa www.sei.dost.gov.ph o sa Facebook page ng Science Education Institute. Pwede rin po kayong tumawag sa 422-0979 o mag-text sa 0907 913-2231 pwede, pwede nyo rin pong i-message ang Facebook page ng um, DOST CAR uh, Regarding po pala sa application ng ating DOST Scholarship um, annual po, annually po ang application natin once every, month, once every year po yung undergraduate scholarship tapos yung JLSS po Thank you so much and um, uh, Sir, uh, lumabas po kayo sa ABRA para mag-college Ano po ang naging inspirasyon ninyo para mag-aral po sa Maynila? Actually, I was uh, given no choice. You know, mom, I came from a not so privileged family. My father was actually the one who encouraged me to apply in this scholarship program. Uh, one main reason maybe is because of the benefits that I could possibly enjoy when I qualify myself in the program and to enjoy of the financial assistance. Because I know right from the start that the DOS scholarship program will support qualifiers in pursuing college education. Uh, it was great, a dream for a simple boy that I was. And with God's guidance, I was one of the lucky few who were given the chance. That is why I am forever grateful to the Department of Science and Technology for giving me an opportunity to earn my college degree. Moreover, the UST did not stop helping me uh, until I was able to get a job as a public school teacher because uh, I, I think uh, they are, uh, the UST is a factor. Uh, I, I think uh, they are still doing it right now for our DUST scholars. They give recommendations to any government uh, service positions. Uh, parang nagbibigay pa rin ngayon yung DOST ng recommendation for our scholars to be uh, accommodated in the Department of Education, particularly in the Department of Education. Parang nabibigyan sila ng importansya. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for being um, a patriot of our country. Indeed, you are a scholar for our country po. So ano po ang may papayan niyo sa mga mag-aaral na mag -e enroll po sa darating na pasukan, sir? As one of the teacher po. Uh, of course, uh, I, I just wish that everything will be back to normal as or it, we will come to the new normal. Uh, Although uh, it's inevitable, this this uh, the the crisis we are facing right now is inevitable. You 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 can cope up. I know you can cope up as long as uh, I'd mentioned earlier, as long as you are determined and persevere and disciplined to to uh, uh, to make your dream a reality. Yes, yes. our viewers so, um you may also contact your teachers pag may problema po kayo sa mga subjects ninyo. I know and I believe naman that all of our teachers out there are concerned to all of their students. So thank you so much po ulit dun, sir. So anong college po kayo? Meron po ba kayong extracurricular activities na sinalihan? Actually, I during my college days at the Philippine Normal University, I... 
I I joined two organizations that is the Scholars Association and the uh, Society for the Advancement of Physics Education, wherein uh, the members are composed of physics major students. So I, I was, I, I am a physics mm -hmm. major student, so I, I was in that group. And in that group, we have that culture of helping each other. Mm -hmm. So yung mga mas nakakatandang scholars sa amin, uh, tinutulungan yung mga mas nakakabata, that is probably the reason why I was able to cope up with the city life in Manila. So, mm -hmm. hindi masyadong naging problema sa akin yung adjustment. It's because of uh, the people I, uh, I've i been with uh, help me. And these are also my uh, fellow scholars. Talaga pa lang nagtutulungan ng ating mga scholars. So um, meron po tayong ibang mga scholars din na pinagsasabay po yung mga extracurricular activities tapos po yung academic performance po. Uh, meron din po ba kayong maipapayo sa mga kagaya po ninyo na may extracurricular life tapos in ginagalingan din po sa academic performance po nila? Actually, yes. Uh, uh, of course, the, the DOST scholarship program require us to uh, maintain a threshold. What I mean is that uh, you have to maintain a certain uh, a certain grade in order to uh, be at the scholarship program. It's good that you should also balance your uh, academic and extracurricular activities. Hindi naman maganda na purely academics lang. You also have to involve yourself to extracurricular activities but the only thing is you should be disciplined enough you should know your priorities because uh it in the dost uh scholarship program i think it is more important to give to give focus on your studies in your academics so be disciplined dapat bigyang uh, weight or bigyang importansya yung pag-aaral uh, as compared to extracurricular activities. Tama po, sir. Sana po napakinggan lahat ng ating mga scholar ang sinabi ni Sir Benjo. So, uh, ano po ang humamon sa inyo sa buhay kolehyo at paano niyo po ito na pagtagumpayan? Uh, uh, I've already mentioned the the first challenge that I had. That was the to how to adjust that is how to adjust yung city life because I was uh, uh, born in the province and I went to Manila for, for my college education. So, but uh, the, the greatest challenge I had was being branded as a scholar. You know that, ma'am? Uh, uh, yes, yes, actually. Uh, being branded a scholar is that you should do better than others. Uh, people would expect so much from you as a scholar and people would think that you are more intelligent, talented, and must be above average. Uh, just like in college days, uh, you should be ready at all times and, and uh, has something to contribute in class discussion. And you should get high scores in tests because your prof professors have high expectations from you. Actually, that's the greatest challenge. So you, you really have to deal with it. But on the other side of the coin, middle, mm -hmm. meeting people's expectation has a positive result for me. Because how you how people treated me as a scholar improved my standards. The scholarship program and the people who gave me that push brought out the best in me. They made me persevere and to always give my best in everything I do. So you yung feeling po mam na talagang you have to you really have to show that you are a scholar. Mm -hmm. Wala, na, uh, na, napa-speechless po ako doon, sir. Napakaganda po ng inyong sinabi. 
Uh, hopefully po, na-inspire lahat po ng viewers po natin sa mga sinabi niyo po, lalo na po yung mga mag-aaral natin ngayon. Uh, maraming salamat, Sir Benjo, para po mas malaman natin ang... Um, mas ma- may mas malaman po natin yung regarding po kay Sir Benjo, panoorin po natin ang sang AVP. Yan, ang bibo talaga ni Sir Benjo. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, nakilala niyo, sir, yung isang kasama ko doon. <laughs> yung huling, yung second to the last po ba na picture, yes, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, our former uh, assistant regional director of that, Ed Cordillera, now the regional director of uh, Alabar Zone, uh, Sir Francis Cesar Bringas. Uh, hi, Sir Francis po, kung nanonood po kayo ngayon. <laughs> si Sir Benjo po ang kasakasama po natin tuwing uh, may caravan and promotion activities po tayo sa Abra. So para ipagpatuloy po natin yung ating interview, si Sir Benjo nakipagsapalaran po sa buhay Maynila, doon siya nag-aral, tapos bumalik din siya sa Abra. Uh, bago po siya bumalik, nag-board, saan po kayo nag-board exam, sir? Actually, sir Mike, I took my uh, licensure examination in Baguio, Baguio City. Thank Talaga, you, sir. Bumalik na po ako sa Abra, then I filed for the LET at nag-take na ako dyan sa Baguio. Thank you, sir. Um, ano po ang pwede niyong ipayo po sa ating mga mag-aaral na kukuha na rin ng kanilang licensure examinations po? Yes, uh, of course, uh, I know if you have completed your college degree, I, I'm sure as, as, as DOST scholar, I'm sure that Uh, you are already equipped with uh, the proper training and knowledge to, to, to become a productive member of the society. So just, just go with it. No, I, know, I know I'm confident. Uh, talagang yung mga DOST scholars natin, I know they are really trained uh, before they go out in the field. I know they are already equipped with the proper skill and knowledge. And, sure, and siguro yung advice na tinatanong ni Sir Mike, you just have to uh, uh, 
put a little, uh, not a little, but put your trust in God. So, kailangan ng gabay ng ating may kapal. Uh, because it's also been my practice whenever I took the exam, uh, I, I always pray. Thank you very much, sir. So, pressure talaga sa magiging branded ka na DOST scholar. <laughs> yes, sir, Mike. <laughs> And uh, tulad ng payo ni Sir Benjo, always pray. And sa lahat nga ng ginagawa natin araw-araw, um, let's seek the divine intervention of our yes. Almighty. Yes, Sir Mike. After po kayong nakipagsapalaran nga po sa Maynila, tapos bumalik kayo kaagad sa Abra High School na nagturo, ano po yung unang pakiramdam po ninyo nung nasa classroom kayo na kayo na po yung pinapakinggan yung kayo na po yung nagtuturo. Yes, when I came back to teach in the Abra High School, actually, uh, I'm not yet a, a, an eligible teacher before, but the school head, uh, Sir Jose Bernardes, hired me as, as a casual teacher. I think that was possible before. Uh, Although they paid me a, 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 the, the salary of a, cash, a contractual teacher, uh, I, I, at the first, I have that uh, boost in, yung parabang nap medyo, uh, I, I have that confident to really face the, my students. And I, I'm even confident to face my colleagues, my co-teachers, because you know, I'm, I'm a DOSD scholar. So medyo malaki po yung, medyo may malaki po yung, uh, may pa, lumaki po yung ulo po, no? Uh, because it boosts my ego as a DOSD scholar. But I, I was able to realize and I learned that I have a lot of, uh, I still have a lot of things to learn when I was in the actual field. So that time I, 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 I realized that uh, I have to be humble. Even if I, I graduated uh, with uh, as a scholar, and I, I was uh, I gained knowledge and skills, and uh, there's always a bigger fish. I I, I always believe in that statement that uh, meron at meron pa rin tao na mas magaling sa and that will that makes me a humble person, and it made me realize talaga na there are still a lot of things to learn, even at my stage right now. Napakarami po pang kailangan dapat uh, matutunan sa buhay. Thank you, sir. So, basically po, parang after ng isang chapter, mag-uumpisa po ulit tayo sa panibagong chapter hanggang may expert po natin kung ano man yung um, activities para dun sa buhay natin. Yes, sir, Mike. Um, and always po na maging humble po tayo tulad ng sabi yes. ni Sir Benjo yes, sir, because hindi natin alam baka dun, yun ang pagkalagmak natin yung pagkayabang natin. <laughs> yes, Sir Mike. So, Sir, sa opportunity na binigay sa inyo being branded as a DOST SEI scholar and then passing the licensure exam, um, nag-widen po yung opportunities natin. So, sa dami po nang pwede nating uh, pag-applyan, uh, what was your inspiration to go back to Abra? Uh, prior, primarily, it's because it's part of my contract. <laughs> it's part of my contract that I have to render services in my own province. Uh, kailangan ta, talaga yun. And, and after graduation in Manila, hindi ko talaga kasi na-appreciate yung lifestyle uh, doon sa Manila. So I think I can be better if I will go home and of course render my services to my fellow Abreño. Kaya, kaya ako bumalik dito sa province rin and uh, uh, at naging maganda naman po ang kinalagyan ko po dito uh, from being a teacher and after after 8 years I was promoted as head teacher and after 12 years I was promoted as, as a supervisor and until now I am a supervisor yeah so dun sa 
promotion ni Sir, nakikita natin yung excellence, isang value ng DOST SEI Scholar. Um, bago pong lahat, ngayong araw din po, simultaneously, kinakandak yung National Exit Conference. So, pinapaalala rin po natin sa mga graduating scholars natin yung kanilang service obligation. Katulad ng sabi yes. niyo, Sir, it was primarily in your contract na sa home province kayo uh, mag-render ng service obligation. Napag-usapan na rin, Sir, natin kanina sa pre-conference natin, pero uh, maybe we would just like to inform our viewers na nasa fieldwork po si Sir Benjo at gusto po namin magpasalamat uh, sa pagpapaunlak po ninyo sa amin ngayong araw kahit panandalian lang na kaistorbo po kami. <laughs> um, sir, baka pwede niyo pong ikwento kung ano yung fieldwork po ninyo. Actually, right now, sir, uh, we, we are uh, conducting the observation and observation of demonstration teaching and interview of teacher applicants in the province of Abra. Uh, since we cannot accommodate all the applicants at the school's division office, so we decided to reach them. So kami na po yung pumupunta and do the interview in their own in their respective uh, districts. So it started since uh, March 18, and it will end until the end of this month. Best regards po, Sir Benjo, and God bless po sa mga uh, fieldworks po ninyo. Sir, nasa academe po kayo, and we, also, we have our alternative learning arrangements. Um, ano po yung pwede nating ipayo sa ating mga mag-aaral ngayong panahon ng pandemya? Uh, yes, yes, Sir Mike. Uh, the, the crisis that we are facing right now is uh, inevitable. The, the COVID-19 pandemic brought about a uh, tremendous change in the world. Uh, it's happening now and we have to deal with it. Uh, for, for the youth, I want you to think of the crisis we are facing right now as the most difficult subject in a class. So I just want you to think it that way. Uh, it will test the mental, physical, and even the emotional aspect of our being. It will push us to our limits, but I'm telling you, don't ever, ever quit because only quitters fail. COVID-19 may have challenged the way you live your life. It also brought about something good in us. Discipline is being harnessed, uh, practical living tested day by day, uh, faith being strengthened, uh, precautionary measures improve, and the like. Uh, schooling may have a different scenario this time, like in the basic education, we have the modular distance learning, but keep on striving harder and remember that what I told you earlier, so I, I keep on repeating this one, just enjoy what you are doing. Nothing is so difficult to achieve for a person with a strong determination, perseverance and discipline. And I would like to add another line that is uh, having strong faith in God. Uh, umasa pa rin tayo na there's a divine intervention as uh, made mention by Sir Mike uh, a while back. I think that's the, the message I would like to tell Sir Mike. Thank you very much, Sir. So, um, palagi pong binabanggit ni Sir Benjo ang salitang discipline. Um, yes. <laughs> Sir Benjo, baka um, gusto niyong expound what discipline means uh, to you. Uh, for me, maybe I'm referring to self-discipline uh, because uh, when, and when I was still a scholar, uh, there are a lot of things you, you can do in your life. Uh, like, for example, uh, 
you 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 can go uh, you can visit malls you can watch uh, cinema but of course for you to uh, survive in 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 that program in the program the scholarship program you have to discipline yourself if you have to spend more time to study then maybe you can spend most of your time to studying parang mga tipong ganun sir more parang on priorities po discipline oh, yes uh, having priority in life and yung mga bagay na yung uh, hindi mo na kailangan gawin yung hindi naman masyadong importanteng gawin ah uh, wag mo nang gawin uh, mas prioritize what is important for you Thank you, sir. So, ngayon ko rin lang na napagtanto na pwede palang maging difficult subjects. And magandang uh, ano po siya, magandang perspective para sa mga viewers po natin. Sir, sa mga hindi naman po nag-aaral ngayon dahil uh, nag um, dahil sa COVID-19 din, and hindi sila nagtuloy. What do you mean, Sir Mike? Um, uh, we have alternative learning arrangements po and you would like sana na i-take advantage ng ating mga out-of-school youth itong mga alternative learning arrangements. And kung gusto nilang mag-avail ng scholarship, nandito rin po yung mga different scholarships ng government po. Oh, uh, that is offered by the DUSD, Sir Mike? Um, I, yung for ano me. po yung no for DepEd po di ba may alternative learning arrangements po ah yes um, yes. yes yes yung mga online class and mm -hmm. yun po may mga scholars po kasi tayo na nag leave of absence for um, difficulty daw sa signal or what for whatever reasons hindi nila nagtuloy for one, for one year Ano po yung mm -hmm. pwede nating ipayo sa kanila para naman ma-motivate po ulit sila to come back uh, fresh to start again po sa program natin? Mm -mm. In fact, in the Department of Education, specifically for the Schools Division Office of ABRA, uh, the, the learning modality that we have is the modular distance learning. So, yun talaga yung pinaka-appropriate na learning modality in Abra, Sir Mike. And uh, of course, uh, we have difficulty in internet connection in Abra. So, not everybody can afford to have internet connection in Abra. So, what we do in the Department of Education is to really provide our learners with the self-learning modules. So there's no reason for them not to study or to stop study because uh, even during this uh, crisis, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we always find ways on how to learn and education must not stop. Thank you very much. So yan po, dun po sa mga viewers po natin. Um, Hindi po reason itong pandemic. We have alternative learning arrangements. Nasabi ni Sir Benjo, meron po tayong mga modules. So, yes. mag-enroll na po ulit kayo sa second SEM. And uh, um, kung wala kayong internet, wala kayong pambili ng laptop, hindi kaya ng phone nyo ang uh, makipag-online uh, class, may modules po tayo mm -hmm. na ano, ipapasyal din po ng mga teachers po natin yan. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you po. Uh, may I call po? Uh, or any addition po, Sir Benjo? Mm. Uh, is it my last word, Sir Mike? <laughs> no, 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 no naman po. Any um, advice po, uh, addition po na gusto niyo pong sabihin sa ating mga viewers? Uh, uh, to our viewers out there, uh, sa, uh, sa mga bata po, na mayroong uh, dreams and if you want to make your dream a reality uh, what you have to do is you have to go to any DOST office <laughs> at mag-apply for the scholarship program 
maraming may tutulong sa inyo ang DOST Scholarship Program. Thank you, sir. So, dreams talaga, it all starts with a dream and syempre, we take action. Um, may I pass po our, the screen to our scholarship coordinator, Ma'am Alice A. Balacopo. Thank you, Sir Benjo, for sharing your time again, inspiring us and the viewers of your story, sir. So for today's episode, here are some of our takeaways from the sharing of Sir Benjo. One is uh, be yourself and believe in yourself. Next is uh, determination, discipline, perseverance are some of the qualities of Sir Benjo uh, where he shared to reach uh, your dreams or goal. Make your dream a reality and one of it is through scholarship program. Another one is poverty is never a hindrance to realize our dreams. Next one is once in a scholarship, we need, balance, we need to balance academics and extracurricular activities and know our priorities. On the branding of uh, brand, uh, branding as a scholar, which is uh, doing better than others, or how to deal with the high, expect, high expectations of people from you, uh, he mentioned that he contribute, it contributed positively in setting standards for himself, and it brought out the best in him. Another one is humble, you, humble yourself for there are a lot of things to learn. Another one is never quit as on the quitters fail. And lastly is have a strong faith in God, trust and ask guidance from our Almighty Father in everything we do. So let us be guided by the learnings or sharings of Sir Benjo in today's third episode. Thank you so much, Sir Benjo, for your time. Yes, uh, thank you also. It's my pleasure, ma'am. As I would mentioned earlier, I will be forever grateful to the Department of Science and Technology. Sir, um, thank you po sa oras, talaga sa panahon. Um, before we, uh, um, as a token of our gratitude, um, may we offer you our simple um, uh, pasasalamat po. Uh, we just want to award the certificate of appreciation to our resource uh, speaker for today. Department of Science and Technology, Cordillera Administrative Region, award this certificate of appreciation to Mr. Benjo P. Agaloos, in grateful acknowledgement of his invaluable inspiration, dedication to the public service, and commitment as a DOST scholar. Uh, given this 26th day of March 2021, during the Dadaat the DOST Scholar, a DOST Scholar story, held at DOST Car Regional Office, signed by our Regional Director, uh, Nancy A. Bantog. Thank you very much again, to sir. And uh, may we hear the closing remarks of our Assistant Regional Director, uh, Dr. Pepita S. Ikikan. Uh, hi, Ma'am Tita. Hi. Sorry. Ang kugayang nga napindo. Okay. Thank you, Gran. And um, to our dear guest resource speaker, Sir Benju Agunoos, to the various university scholarship coordinators, to the DUST scholars, to our DUST CAR family led by our provincial science and technology directors, our DUST CAR regional director, Dr. Nancy A. Banto, the DUST CAR scholarship coordinator, Ms. Alice Balakwa, 
with the scholarship unit staff who have facilitated this activity. All the listeners and viewers, good morning to all. In behalf of the DOSC CAR, we thank everyone for your participation that made this event successful. We thank also the in inspiration and support of our regional director and our colleagues, both from the provincial SMB centers and at the regional office for the successful conduct of this third series of the DHAT, the DOST Scholar, or a DOST Scholar's Story. We congratulate and highly appreciate the participation and sharing of Sir Bencho, uh, who is considered as among the successful and exemplary models of DOST Scholar graduates. Thank you, sir, for engaging in this third series of the DOST Scholar. You are a testimony that things become possible with perseverance and commitment to your personal goals and to the objectives of the scholarship program. You have highly surpassed the challenges during your DOSC scholarship, as you have shared earlier. You have, um, what you are today, inspire not only the current scholars and potential scholars, but all the listeners and viewers. You are one of our notable model, models for the scholars to emulate. Now, to all the listeners and viewers, we hope you were inspired by the sharing of Sir Bencho. To the potential scholars, we hope you were encouraged to aspire as the USC scholar and become one of the future researchers, engineers, or scientists. As future DOSC scholars, and to be USC Scholar graduates, you will soon help increase the science and technology human resources in the country. We look forward to more testimonies of success from other USC Scholar graduates in the next series of the DAT USC Scholar. Maraming salamat po. Back to you, Gran. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Tita. And Sir Benjo, we will be sending po pala yung certificate ninyo po and our simple token of appreciation po for joining us today. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po ulit. Okay, thank you very much also, ma'am. Thank you so much, thank sir. You, thank you. Uh, thank you again, Sir Benjo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Doc Nancy. Thank you, Sir Mike, Ma'am Great, and Ma'am Alicia. <laughs> Have a wonderful morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, any announcement, Gwen? Uh, yes, po, meron po tayong announcement before we would end our program for today. I just want po to promote our next DADAT, the DOST Scholar. Um, this would be, this will be held on April. I uh, will be having another um, guest speaker, a successful DOST Scholar. I just want also to um, read again this information for you with regards to the DOST SEI Scholarship. You may visit their website at www.sei.dost.gov.ph and for more inquiries, you may call us at 422-0979 or pwede po kayong mag-text sa 0907-913-2231. And uh, we will be posting po yung evaluation form po natin um, on our comment section po sa Facebook Live. Kindly fill up po. Thank you very much. Who, who uh, contributed to the Did we? Yes, ma'am, we documented okay. it. And we can now freely talk, po, ma'am, dito sa uh, meeting. We are already playing our corporate AV people sa FB Live. Institute of Sciences and Technology. Um, Sir Benjo. University. Thank you, Paulette. And uh, from TLGU. Uh, Mike. Yes, ma'am. Ma